the bull, yeah, I'm uh, a bull, bull being uh, aggressive. And I think this shows in a beautiful way uh, both the, uh, the body and the action of such a bull. Where we are still absolutely ignorant is to be able to, in a scientific way, predict particle size, the shape of a given chemical composition. We have great skills here to make them through experience, but you cannot yet predict whether something will come out a little needles, or little cubes, or little balls, from chemical composition or anything else. Naturally, you cannot do it by grinding, because you cannot control grinding to have all cubes, right? So you have to do it by synthesis. With experience over so many years, particularly at Clarkson, we have been able to produce more uniform particles than anybody else, which have different applications. As I mentioned, there's a pigments in environmental studies, and right now, most exciting in medical applications. People don't always appreciate all the ramifications of the size and shape of the particles, in addition to chemical composition. Naturally, chemistry plays a dramatic role, but that's not enough. You have to have also clear understanding how this, for example, drug is being delivered in what form. We can make now drug particles which are solid spheres, all tiny, you don't see them with naked eye, even, uh, but they can be hollow, they can be solid, they can be made up of uh, needle-type subunits. This changes their reactivity, dissolution rate, and, and so on. And it's the same chemistry. So, uh, when you deal with matter, one aspect is uh, the, the degree of dispersity. And that's my main or major interest in addition to chemistry of these particles, because so many properties depend on size and shape. Now, everybody understands, you know, that a particle of steel will be different than a particle of wood. That's normal. But not everybody understands how significant is degree of dispersion of the same matter. And that affects our lives in physical and chemical way. Now, here the problem is, is the topic we are talking about, is that there are not too many specialists in the field in the world, you see. Now you have this whole nanomania, I call it, none of this, none of that, you, you're flooded with it, without most people knowing what they're talking about.
numerous awards, international accolades. Is there anything that you're most proud of? Yeah, that I never seek to get any award. <laughs> they all came to me. Is uh, the work by uh, Domenico Colanzi. This particular uh, piece of art he did uh, as a gift to me. You cannot do good research if you're not creative. You cannot do great art if you're not creative. So I, th I think art and artists and scientists communicate in a great way. They don't have to have opposite skills but they appreciate what they are doing. Accolades from your students as well. Uh, this is the greatest joy. <laughs> there is nothing like it. I just received some letters, I brought it home, and my wife shed some tears <laughs> reading it. Or when I meet alumni, what they tell me how I influence their lives or something. And I always did it by, when I met freshmen first day, I told them, you better prepare, be prepared to work towards your PhD degree. They look at me, you know, they can't find even a room at Clarkson, and you tell them you should be uh, <laughs> working towards a doctorate degree. You set the standards high, and we do it in everything. And if you set your standards high, you achieve. My God, yeah. This is myself and uh, my sister. I think I was a good boy, I must say, because I liked to uh, go to school and I liked uh, to do things uh, at home uh, more than to play. And uh, I was, my parents thought I was lovable. I was really a good student. I only one year goofed a little, maybe third year of school, not to get the top grade. And uh, afterwards, uh, all the way to the end, I got always uh, excellent grades and I enjoyed it. I never found going to school a uh, torture or unpleasant. Uh, uh, feeling. That's when I met my wife. I was a graduate student, yeah. That's a beautiful picture because she's a beautiful lady. Uh, we were on vacation, you know, the most exciting cities probably in the world, Dubrovnik, which is naturally part of Croatia at the Adriatic Sea. I don't know if I should tell you the story without my wife killing me. Uh, I was still a bachelor and uh, I lived with a couple uh, in, uh, I had a room sublet to me in a nice spot in the city of Zagreb where I went to university. And uh, I asked my uh, people who rented a place if I could have a party. And they allowed me to do so. It was a beautiful evening, and we had a, I invited a number of people. Among them was my present wife, whom I didn't meet before. And after having a few drinks and a beautiful uh, moonshine and uh, uh, a, a, a few dances, I told her I'm going to marry her. And she, she laughed at me, thinking that I had a little too much to imbibe. But a few months later, she was my wife. <laughs> well, for students, I think most important is to, to choose the right uh, area of interest. If you are disinterested and forced to do it, by family pressure or anything else, or financial pressure and so on, uh, it's, it's an invitation to 
sometimes disaster. You see, you cannot succeed if you don't like, if you're not enthusiastic about what you do. Now, you may not know it because your horizon is not such that you know all the subjects. So you may have to, you know, test it. Uh, but the final decision has to be made, and that's, I think, the essential aspect that what you would like to do for the rest of your life. Naturally, things change, modifications, but if you don't start right, it's a lost cause. So if you, if you choose a subject that is boring to you or a nuisance, how do you expect to be successful, you know? You become a misanthrope, and uh, that's the worst thing that can happen. Give as many examples as they can think of to show how chemistry uh, is uh, controlling our lives in our environment. There's no question about it. There are interesting examples, you know, which I would, uh, I used to give to students to uh, uh, explain the importance of, uh, of uh, the, the dimensions of matter, of, of, of uh, subunits of matter. Uh, one is the fog and, uh, and the rain, you know, and driving, that's simple. First of all, they have to understand uh, what, what we are dealing with. See, if they don't understand it, if it's not clearly uh, presented to them, you know, they, have, they may have wrong, wrong ideas. So you have to come up with uh, uh, examples. Now, first of all, the shape and size of, part of particles does not re only apply to solids. You know, when we talk about particles, people inherently think you have solid stuff, you know. But droplets can, are also particles. Bubbles are particles. And just go to something that all students know about is beer, and what is g great about beer are small bubbles. <laughs> Battaglia, which means uh, a battle. And really, I, I got it for Clarkson. That's uh, cast number one. Uh, it's only two in the world now. And uh, the meaning is everything we do is some sense a battle, battle for ideas, battle for funding. Uh, and uh, uh, it's representative of it in a very uh, dramatic way. Well, uh, it's in line with my philosophy of university, which is a cultural institution. So it has to both promote uh, science and art. <laughs>